Hi, this is Rob Carlin. I'm a pre-sales engineer with the Application Delivery Group. And for those people out here in service virtualization land, uh, we're going to teach you really quickly and give you some highlights on how to create a virtual service through WebSphere MQ recording. So let's test the stage. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to review some messaging middleware basics in service virtualization's role in removing its constraint for development and testing, what you'll need to demonstrate MQ service virtualization, which obviously you have your binaries, um, you know how to, uh, your MQ folks know how to build and, and configure MQ manager and queues and also the uh, server con channel, which I'll, I'll explain in a little bit. Uh, there's some MQ client jars uh, that you'll need for service virtualization. And uh, we can also point you to the MQ, there's an, excuse me, the service virtualization project for running this demo. Uh, so you can actually try it out on your own. And then we'll go through a quick demonstration on how to do MQ service virtualization using live system recording. So here's a, a, an architectural depiction of messaging middleware message flow facilitated by a typical message-oriented middleware solution like IBM WebSphere MQ, um, Sonic MQ, Oracle ESB Mule, or really any standard JMS-based implementation, right? So, you know, in this case, the client obviously sends a request to the MQ live queues in order to query data or invoke a service on the server. The server reads the request from the live queue, sends a response back to the client containing the data that was queried or the result of the action. So in messaging applications, as you know, there are or can be one or more uh, than one response for each request. Um, we're just going to keep things very simple here. We're going to pretty much have a request response type of a messaging flow. Um, and then we're going to go ahead and quickly um, use this uh, depiction to be able to go ahead and use our approach for adding proxy queues to be able to facilitate the uh, uh, substitution of your live queues. So let's see how we can uh, use the query approach here. So in using service virtualization, what we'll do is we'll put the service virtualization recorder in between a, uh, your client and your live queues. And we'll also create a proxy request queue and proxy response queue uh, that your MQ administrator can do. Um, and I'll show you how to do that in just a little bit. Um, after we go ahead and do a recording, uh, we'll go ahead and do a playback. So instead of having the recorded transactions in the middle, we're going to substitute that with the VSC service. We're also gonna, going to disconnect from our live request queue and response queue that's in your MQ environment as well as your service. So we replace the service with a VSC service, and you run your, your live queues through these proxy request and proxy response queues. So that's pretty much the, 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 the basics of how we're going to set things up. In terms of, uh, again, what you're going to need, um, obviously your software. Um, we're going to do the configuration. Uh, make sure you have your client jars, which are approximately 13 client jars for your service virtualization workstation, and then we're going to run the demo. So really quick to review, uh, for setting up MQ, you're going to need a queue manager. Um, you're going to need four queues. So in addition to your two live queues, in this case we have a proxy request and proxy response queue, excuse me, order request and order response queue, you're going to add a proxy request and a proxy response queue. You're also going to create a server connection channel or server con channel um, for this as well. So most of you who are familiar with MQ know how to do that. So let's really quick go to the demonstration. So uh, just like I had in the depiction of the uh, architecture for my recording, uh, rather than having a live service up here, I actually have a virtual service that I've created because I don't have a live application server running uh, outside or connecting to my MQ environment. I'm just going to go ahead and create a virtual service. I created a virtual service that I'm going to use as my live service. Right? That live service is running in my MQ environment. So if I look at my MQ, you see my queue manager. Inside my queue manager, I have my queues. So these are my live queues. These are my proxy queues. Again, you set up a proxy request and proxy response queue. And the other, other configuration you'll need here is your server connection channel, server con channel, right? And that's really all you're going to need in terms of your MQ environment. So once, the, once that's all set up, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and create my deploy my server responder, which I've done. 
which in this case acts as my live service in order for me to do the recording. So I have that out there in virtual server land. It's over here running uh, in my uh, dev test console and it's ready to accept requests that I'm going to be sending through my recording process. And I'm going to very quickly do a recording here. So I'm going to go to my console. I'm going to create a virtual service by recording. And I'm going to call it just new image. Just we'll keep it very simple in the interest of time. I'm going to use my MQ transport protocol. I'm going to create my Lisa model file here called new image also. And you can add the file extension if you like. And this go next. And in this case, just generate the service using our proxy queues. And keep the correlation as sequential. And just specify your live and request and response queues. So this is my live queue, which is my going to be my product request queue and my proxy queue. And then I'm going to set up my response queue. So proxy response and product response are the name of my live queues. And then I'm going to go ahead and just after I specify that, I'm going to add it to my response destination list and say next. Okay. So after I do that, um, I'll be in waiting mode. And now I can go ahead and bring up my client and record transactions. So if I want to do that real quick, I just bring up my client, my test client. And I don't know if I've gone ahead and I've changed these guys in the interest of time. Yeah, I kept them all in the live queues, so I'm, I'm good to go. Um, I want to change those to the proxy queues, though. I want to make sure that when you're recording and playback, you want to change all of your queues to your proxy queues. So I'm going to call these, instead of response queue, I'm going to call these proxy response queue. And this is going to be proxy request queue. Okay. So in the interest of time, normally I would do all of these guys. And I'll, I'll just go ahead and do them now. So proxy response queue, proxy request queue. And this is the way I'm going to play back as well. Proxy response queue, proxy request queue. And I got two more before we finish this brain dead exercise right here. Okay, proxy response, proxy request, and one more proxy response and proxy request. Okay, so you get an idea. That's done. And now I can just bring up my ITR, my interactive test recorder, and I can actually start recording transactions. So if I've done my configuration correctly, I'm just adding my, executing my, uh, my Lisa test case here, and I'm actually doing a recording. You know, I bring up my server, I'm actually recording transactions. You can see them successfully recording over here in the bottom of the virtual sim server image recorder. Okay, this will get done really quick here. I think there's only about 10 transactions so when this finishes up, we'll have our virtual service created. We can uh, deploy this new service that we've created, and that service can now be run against our proxy queues. So no more reliance on having to wait for the live NQ environment or having to use live queues. Okay. So I'm going to say next here in my recorder. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and add the data protocol handler. In this case, I need to add my um, XML data protocol. Make sure you add your XML data protocol to that. And then if you want to just play back stateless, which we're going to do right here, we'll just go ahead and click. And I've got my virtual service recorded. Now, it's just a matter of going ahead and um, deploying this guy. So getting rid of our live environment. So I'm going to get rid of our server responder, which is right here. I'm going to stop this guy. Okay, so that was our live service that we actually had or whatever live service that you would have in your environment. And now I'm going to deploy the service that I just built. It's going to be my new virtual service. So that's going to be uh, record, uh, deployed. Now it's just a matter of, and you can see it out here, it's sitting here waiting for traffic from my proxy queue successfully. So now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and bring up my test client again, and I'm going to run it. And if I did this right, um, I'm going to go ahead and get uh, traffic on my um, uh, using my proxy queues against my virtual service, which I do. So you can see as we're going through the uh, run of the test execution, I'm able to go ahead and see traffic successfully running. Um, over here on the right, and as soon as the as soon as the test is done, 
it'll let me go ahead and focus that. You can see all the transactions. Okay. And this is one more. And we're ending the test now. Good. Okay, so now we got 11 transactions, which we had in the live system. We have a virtual system that looks, feels, and smells like the, the real thing. It's got valid transactions. If I was going ahead and look, I didn't miss anything. All of my transactions requests um, are matching transactions. So they all are matching what I've recorded. What we've shown here is your ability to creating virtual services by using MQ recording and playback within your WebSphere MQ environment. Um, which really provides you the ability to uh, develop and test in an unconstrained manner with live-like data and real application behavior. Uh, this is just an example of some of the market-leading protocols that we support within our service virtualization platform. Um, other support that we have include a variety of TCP protocols uh, for doing a variety of, of web services, mainframe support, as well as other application packages.